A lot of people aren't aware that this iPhone app even exists. Um, this is for classic field. Uh, so the field that you're used to using that's been around for, for a good while now uh, has always been iP or iPad based. And there's there were several requests for an iPhone app. And this release came out uh, sometime around the November period of 2017. And again, it's just uh, not very well known. So let's go ahead and I've got my iPad uh, or my iPhone displayed right now. And you can see we have the BIM 360 field app and then everybody just ignore my, my emails down here. Uh, don't worry about those. But if we go to the uh, BIM 360 field app, you'll see it displayed here. It looks very similar to what we have on the iPad. Uh, I would almost call this uh, uh, BIM 360 field app, uh, uh, BIM 360 field light. Uh, because we're not going to have all the capabilities that we do on the iPad. On the iPad, we can basically do every function uh, except for upload drawings to the library from the app. With the iPhone app that we're going to go over today, uh, we simply have the ability to uh, update our statuses on our issues, create new issues, uh, generate checklists or modify checklists. So it's really based around the primary functions of field, which are issues and checklists. So having said that, you can see here that we've got the uh, the same functionality we do with the sync settings. We can change those and update them, but ultimately we have to sync to get all the information down to the uh, the iPhone. Um, once we've synced, we can choose which functionality we want to review in the uh, in the list here on the left. So you can see we are, we're limited to issues and checklists. I'm going to go ahead and choose issues. That'll bring up our issue list. And you can see this functionality or in this, this screen and uh, the user interface itself looks very similar to what we would see in the, um, in the iPad app. So here I am, I'm, I'm in this uh, by location mode. Uh, you can see it's sorting everything down by the staff restroom. And you can see I have several different uh, issues within the staff restroom that I can respond to directly from this screen. So if I click on draft, um, it'll give me the option to update this status to potentially ready to inspect. I can make comments on this issue directly from, from here. So this will bring up the issue log. I can bring up, I can uh, display the comments and type text here uh, to update the comments. So we'll just say, uh, not my problem. And we'll hit the plus sign and added this to the, uh, the issue itself. And then finally, we'll just walk through a quick demonstration of how an issue is uh, created and captured. Again, it's gonna be very similar to the, the iPad app if you're familiar with using that. So from here, we're just gonna go and hit the plus sign. We're gonna generate an issue. We'll call it uh, hole in drywall. So we'll type, we're just gonna use this pre-filled item here, say hole in drywall. We can add an attachment. So in this case, we're going to add attachment. It looks like it's uh, Friday on the job site. And uh, this individual caused a hole in the wall on his way out. So we've captured that image. One thing I do want to note is uh, in the iPad app, we would have the ability to come in here and create markups on top of this image. In this case, uh, we're not going to be able to do that. So again, it's it's kind of an iPhone light, right? We can we can create the image and save that image, but we don't have the ability to edit or mark up that image. But I think generally that's okay, um, and this will be this will be helpful for a lot of our subcontractors that are primarily responding to um, issues, anyways, and updating the statuses. And then we have the ability to choose which issue list this goes into. So again, I think work work to complete is a uh, is a good issue list for it to to be in. We've got the company. We can assign the drywall subcontractor to this. The status is set to open. Our date created was today, and then our due date um, is set to the next day. And we can change the location if we need to, the changing station, and then just simply click on done, and we've created that issue and it's available for us to, to view. We also have the ability to leverage our uh, issue templates. So if we wanna quickly create issues, uh, we can simply drop those issues onto our screen and modify those from there. So this is a, a quick and easy way to um, 
capture information in the field from your iPhone. And like I said, I think primarily this will be helpful for our, your subcontractors in adoption if they have the ability to get on here and respond to those issues very quickly from their iPhone uh, versus being forced to carry around their iPad all the time. So hopefully this, this, will, this will help in that. But let's, uh, let's run through a checklist real quick and just show you kind of how that functionality works. So in the top left-hand corner, we're gonna go here to checklist and we're gonna drop down to our, let me pull it up here, there we go, to our fire extinguisher checklist. And we'll just hit the plus sign. It's gonna create the, uh, the new checklist here and we can just hit uh, pass for each one of these and you'll see it. There's a little bit of a delay between my iPhone and the computer. So if you're, if you're seeing it being kind of slow, um, that's probably what it is. We're gonna hit fail on this second one. And you'll see that one issue was generated just like we would have on the iPad. And then we'll hit pass on the other one. So you can see here that it's, it's passed. And then in the iPad version, you have something at the top called the header. Um, to access that information, you're gonna go to um, the little eye icon here and you'll be able to see all the information regarding your header. So uh, we could still capture signatures here uh, if we go to the uh, sign button over here in the right hand corner, it's going to change the orientation of that. Um, but we can simply sign our name, click on the done at the top right hand corner and then close. And again, we're going to be able to come back and have that signature captured. Tap back out to header and then you'll see we have comments. We can assign a location uh, to this checklist. So where was this checklist? Uh, created for, and then we're, we've completed that checklist. And then finally, the last part of this, uh, just like it would be on the, uh, the iPad, we have the ability in the right hand corner to come down here and sync. So once we sync, all this information that's captured in the field will then be shared with the, uh, the web, which will ultimately be, ultimately be shared to, uh, to the rest of the team members, and we can continue the workflow of addressing all the issues on the project. And uh, that's generally it. So hopefully you, you got something out of that. You know now that there's a, a iPhone app available for the, uh, for the classic field version. And then as we get into uh, the second generation of field, which is built kind of on the docs platform, um, they're going to be expanding this functionality uh, on that second platform to encompass both Android uh, phones, iPhones, and Android and iPhone ios based tablets so you'll see more function functionality built around this but if you're using classic field and you need uh some additional functionality and think this will be beneficial we just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of this and uh, is utilizing it if they if they have this need so uh having said that uh that kind of wraps up uh this tip and trick for field i'm going to pass it on to michael and uh, he's going to take us through a, a tip or trick for glue, and then we'll come back to me, and I'll follow up with a with a, another one. So let me uh, let me switch this over to Michael. Hey guys. Okay, so um, hopefully everybody can see my screen now. But we're gonna we're about to do a uh, our second poll question. That poll question is: How do you typically use glue? Do you use it with Navisworks for coordination? Um, do you use it internally for clash detection or clash pinpoint? Or do you just use glue for coordination or do you not use it at all? <laughs> so um, once that closes, uh, we'll actually jump. <clears throat> I'll start out actually in Navisworks here. Wow, 40% don't use glue at all. 30% use it with Navisworks so far. Okay, cool. Okay, good to know. So if you haven't used it before, then all my tips and tricks are probably gonna be helpful. Um, so again, what we're going to do um, 
is we're going to start off in uh, Navisworks here. Uh, one of the uh, <laughs> biggest complaints that we get about glue is that uh, they people like their Navisworks workflow, and they don't want to disrupt that. Well, what glue is really strong at is is, is enhancing the and improving the uh, the, the Navisworks uh, BIM coordination workflow because <clears throat> what you can essentially do is you can have your model up. Uh, in the cloud so that everybody can view it um, in glue. Um, you can have that same coordinated model and then you can actually still run uh, clash detection and, and run your coordination all still through Navisworks. And the way that you do that <clears throat> is you just click on the uh, BIM 360 tab in Navisworks. You uh, click right here, go to projects, you pick your project. I've already got it picked. And the reason that I've already got it picked is just because I didn't want to waste time uh watch you having you guys watch things upload and then once you <clears throat> pick your project you just pick your uh your, your merged model okay so you hit that you hit okay and you're you're essentially good to go right there okay you can even um <clears throat> refresh so if there's certain things that just oh oops that was that's <clears throat> well give me a second um i will reopen this um, so I've got my model right here. <clears throat> so you can also save your model on um, your desktop. Um, and I apologize for that. I got a, um, I got a an illegal operation right there. Um, but so you can save it on your desktop, and then uh, every time that you open your model, it's going to uh, bring up the uh, most recent version of it. Okay. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, in case something like this happened, I had a uh, um, had something primed and ready. Okay, so here we go. So while this is uh, opening, I guess what I'll do is uh, I'll kind of jump to another one of my tricks, um, and I'll come back to this uh, glue to Navisworks workflow thing. Okay, so um, <laughs> one of the things that uh, that's also pretty helpful in um it, with glue <clears throat> is uh clash pinpoint that's something that i see even people that are using glue don't um they don't utilize this maybe it's just because primarily the people using it are the uh the bim coordinators but uh for your subcontractors it's important for them to know about clash pinpoint okay so um <clears throat> basically what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to take a look at um my uh, duct for steel clashes, we can already see there's a pretty major one here with this piece of duct work. So um, <clears throat> basically, I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to uh, mark it up just like I would um, in Navisworks or, or, you know, regularly in glue. And I'll make the comment. I'll say move, move duct south to miss steel. Okay, and then I would notify myself of the issue. Okay, so once I do that, um, you're gonna see uh, that I'll get an email here shortly. And that's nice if, you know, it's gonna inform me of the issue, okay? But um, the really cool part, I guess, is, is that um, <clears throat> in Revit, um, you can actually come back into your model and you can uh, utilize the clash pinpoint um, functionality here. And so you'll see, okay, right here at 1248, we just ran a clash test. And so I sent this one to me. So basically only the, uh, the clashes that you've been informed of are gonna show up here. But if I hit view selected, <clears throat> what it's gonna do is it's gonna take me to that object, okay? So I'm gonna actually, um, click it right here and then I'm just going to say show model <clears throat> and so what I can do is I can actually modify my uh, my duct work you know immediately <clears throat> okay so thankfully I've got my drawing in there <clears throat> okay so it looks right there like I'm clearing the steel so I'll just do that I'll hit save and then um, I would glue it again and then that would send the update up. Um, I'm not going to actually do that because I don't want to uh, freeze anything up, <clears throat> uh, but basically it would update everything. Um, you know, if you want, I guess, comment, you know, make a comment 
uh, within the with the questions or whatever, and um, I'll see if uh, I'll I'll show that off I guess towards the end maybe. Um, okay. Hold on. <coughs> Task manager. Oh, looks like Navisworks is giving me flack again. So just bear with me and let me um, do that. Um, okay, okay. Let me just open it up again. And I've got another another tip here. So while Navisworks is opening up uh, a second time, I will um, we'll jump into another one. So like another thing that uh, I get consistently, um, like issues uh, th that I get consistently with um, with uh, glue. Um, the the biggest problem is uh, that um, if you've never used it before, is that the uh, the the toolbars are maybe you know like you can't find them and so uh the you know my biggest troubleshooting problem is just you you, op you go over here you go to options and then you hit restore bin 360 toolbar defaults and so essentially that brings it so that you know all of your all of your uh you know, all of your menus are in the uh, the home place the the original place uh this typically ha you know typically this will happen for you whenever um you know, whenever you change monitors or if you're on the road or something like that uh, and you can't find them, that's that's typically um, what happens here. <clears throat> um, so uh, my last, I guess, glue tip um, is uh, with um, with clash reporting. OK, so another thing that I've noticed is that, you know, people, all they do is they just they just run the clash and then they, uh, you know, they just kind of review it. <laughs> OK, um, so. One of the more powerful things uh, that I've noticed is that you can, you know, you can sort things and 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 uh, group things by status. So if you just wanted to see the open items, then you could do that. So if I come down here and I just there was a couple of these that were zero inch flashes. So if I just select some of these, then um, I can. Um, actually go in here and hide them. So I'll just pick some of these. And then if I hit ignore, you're gonna see, okay, now they're not showing up, right? <clears throat> so basically it, it if I just have my open status on, then I'm only gonna see the uh, the items that are not, you know, that are relevant to me right now. Okay. Another thing is just by grouping things, uh, you can you could group it by group by uh, review status or you could also group it by uh you know by model so what's hitting uh this model so you could say okay i just want to see these right here that are with ductwork so like it, it actually goes and it groups your clashes for you uh, so this is helpful because you know basically okay there's two clashes with this piece of steel right here so now you know that so you know um you can it's just going to allow you to very you know much easier much more easily um run your clash report and, and test things okay so now let's try this one more time so with um, I was having problems with with Navisworks this morning as well so <clears throat> anyway um, so I guess I will uh, upload or open a, a model here using BIM 360 and you'll see just exactly how fast it goes but <clears throat> um, Okay, so I can just I just pick my model, I hit open, and then it's going to bring it in. Okay, so that was actually pretty fast. That was faster than I than I anticipated it to be. Okay, so it's got everything in there. Um, you know, basically, it's it's more or less apples to apples to what you're seeing over here in um in our model. Um, so uh, another kind of tips and tricks for uh, you know to to use Navisworks with glue. What I like to do is I like to um, actually uh, use my um, search sets um, uh, in Navisworks to uh, color code. So um, basically, I'll just put those up there. And, and uh, <laughs> so if I you know so if I want to just it's to me it's a whole lot faster to do 
um, in Navisworks. I can just pick my search set and then override the color. Um, same thing. Uh, Storm drain, right click. So it's just a whole lot easier for me to set up my model uh, like this rather than going through and doing it in um, in uh, in in glue because uh, I'm it's just it's it's a simple two click process. Okay, so I can just go through and do that. So that's that's typically what I do with uh, you know with my color coding, and then basically all that I do once I've got all my colors set up, I just go to viewpoint. I save the viewpoint. We'll call this uh, actually. I'm gonna, I want to do it in plan mode because that's, in my opinion, that's the best way. So we'll just call this plan. And so if I want to um, save this up to BIM 360, all I have to do is just click on my shared views here. I click on my view, then I hit new. And um, basically, it's just going to drop it up there. Okay. So also, you know, same same thing. If you guys are utilizing the, um, you know, your clash tests in Navisworks, you can still use the viewpoint method um, to, uh, you know, to to um, to run your clash report. You, you know, you can you can have them both in Navisworks and in Glue. You just same as before. You create your viewpoints, and then, you know, if you've got your folder hierarchy set up here, uh, this is a, a VA Beaver Storm issue so either we need to uh, raise the storm drain or we need to lower the duct i'm going to suggest lower the duct because uh, that's more important so i'll just select there and then i'll hit new <clears throat> and then because i clicked on it before it um it remembers the name of it it remembers the folder that i just picked i hit save and then boom i've got i've got my clash up there both in navisworks and in glue for everybody to see um, so if I if I come over here into glue, click on viewpoints, we'll see that that probably has already showed up. Nick. Okay, so now I can go. But you know now my subs can go to it and view, view it. So if if you guys use the viewpoint method, you can still you know this kind of makes glue even more powerful. So that, you know anybody can review their clashes at any time. Um, you don't have to rerun the clash tet, the, the, the clash report. Um, so those are my um, quick uh, Navisworks and glue tips and tricks. Oh, the last thing, actually, one, I have one more. So um, if anybody out there is using BIM 360 field and they want to track equipment, um, the way that you can do that, you can either use, um, you can either upload a, a model uh, that has search sets in it or selection sets as well. Um, just upload an MWD and then, you know, you'll be able to, to, uh, you know, uh, map things with your model from those search sets. Or if you want, if you're doing it in glue, then what you can do, you just click on your, uh, models tab and mine showed up over here. So when it show when, when that happens, uh, all you do is you just click the more actions button and then hit share with field. And so what that's going to do is it's going to upload your model the field so that you can then uh, you know use your 3d geometry uh, and take data outside of it and then you know map your map your equipment and track it okay so those are basically my tips and tricks for uh, Navisworks and glue I think um, we're about to turn it back over to uh, Clinton and he's going to do um, some stuff with uh, BIM 360 docs and then after that I will do um, some Revit to BIM 360 ops tips and tricks. Okay, so I'll pass pass it along right to um, Clinton. All right, thanks, Michael. So let's go ahead and do a quick poll um, to find out how many of you uh, use BIM 360 docs and uh, see what the the overall response is, or if you have used it at all. So Docs is the is kind of the new platform. Uh, it's the product that uh, that the second generation of Field will be based off of, and this will sort of be your document management uh, portion. So looks like we're getting about 85% of everybody's voted, and uh, overwhelmingly, it looks like uh, most of you have never 
use docs. So uh, that's that's fine, and that's we're just going to kind of demonstrate for you um, some of the capabilities of it today. And again, I'm going to step back since so many of you haven't really even had exposure to it. Um, I'm assuming some of you know, but but again, Docs is kind of this platform that will be the document management platform for uh, all of the BIM 360 products as they get moved on to the um, into this. I keep using the word platform, and I think that's the right term. But but Docs is sort of the underlying library for all of the different services. You can see here um, in the in the top that we'll be able to have the ability to do project management, field management. Um, uh, BIM, 360, BIM 360 glue will also come over here as model management. That functionality is part of this second gen platform. Um, these are still early, um, you know, releases of this, and they're continuing to make updates to them. Uh, but project management will host your submittals and your RFIs. Field management is going to host your checklist, your quality control, safety, uh, daily updates, uh, those type of activities. Um, but document management is by far the one that um, has been out the longest and is really starting to be more solidified in its functionality and, and may be something that's worth uh, looking at uh, depending on what your needs are. But um, I'm going to go through some of that functionality today and uh, sort of show you how it can, how it can kind of help you. And, and the primary thing with Docs is really just that it's document management. So uh, the system is set up to give you really robust level of functionality with regards to uh, permissions. So we can permission each individual folder um, both by a role. So a project manager can have access to this, a company, um, meaning that you know applied software can have access to this, or we could do it by individual emails. And we have the ability to set this up as view only, view upload, view upload edit, and then view upload edit and control. Um, view upload edit and control is unique because it kind of gives uh, a sub tier um, administrative function to an individual to control that folder so that they can then set up their own permissions for that folder and invite people within their team to that folder and create subfolders, that type of thing. So this is pretty unique and uh, being able to permission each one by any one of these three uh, uh, points is really, uh, really cool. And again, that, that functionality is very granular and you can set this up any way you want to. But we can come in here, and I've already set up uh, these these folders here. We're, we're, we've got something called a plan section and a project file section. Uh, when you, whenever you upload something to the plan section, um, its expectation is that that is a set of plans. Um, and again, it's around document management. So how do we manage those plans? And you can see here, um, for instance, when I'm in combined drawings, you can see that we have a uh, the file name, and that file name was combined CD set. So what I've done is I've uploaded a single PDF file with multiple sheets in it. And the software has recognized that PDF file and said, we need to break this out into individual sheets and name them appropriately. So we would set up the title block um, in there. So we would point to the PDF where that title exists and where that page number exists. And after that, it'll, it'll automatically scan the documents for us and create these individual sheets for us. And it'll, it'll also hyperlink these sheets. So there's a lot of the, uh, the market is going in this direction because it makes uh, managing it by individual sheet makes it much easier to navigate, especially when you're talking about navigation on a tablet in the field. So you can see here that we now have the ability to, um, to uh, view this document and utilize these hyperlinks. And we could just go from one to the other and have that functionality available to us. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And that's all part of the upload process. So as you take it, as you take that file, upload that multi-sheet PDF to the, the product, it's going to walk you a step-by-step -step process in order to set up that title block, run the OCR, capture that information, and then split these sheets out. And it's really a simple process. Um, and then we, we also have the ability with Docs which is, I think, unique specifically to Docs, is, uh, is the uh, ability to do a similar function, but with a Revit file. 
So instead of uploading a multi-sheet PDF, we have the ability to upload a Revit file and it's intelligent enough to be able to say, here are the sheets within the Revit file that I need to publish. So you can see that this file name was actually a Revit file. I uploaded it and all of these PDFs were created from that individual Revit file. So now I've got uh, individual PDFs associated with the Revit file. And if I upload another version, it's gonna go ahead and take care of the version control for me as well. So again, like this one uh, wasn't modified or anything. So it's showing up as V1, whereas these other sheets are showing up as V2 because modifications were made to those. So it's keeping track of all that. Again, uh, we have the ability to do some, some further analysis on this. And this is kind of the tip for uh, this webinar that I wanted to demonstrate. But we have the ability to actually compare documents. So if we go uh, lower level to second level, and we click up here, there's an option to compare these drawings. So now we can sort of start to see uh, the differences between these two drawings. So let's let this load. And this probably isn't the, the greatest example, but you can see underneath here, we have uh, one of the drawings, and then on top, we have the A101 here. And if we needed to line these up, we can simply click on the align tool here and we can drag this around to meet, uh, you know, the columns and grid lines and get everything lined up so that we can actually do a little bit more comparison on this. Uh, we also have the ability to use this uh, slider bar. So we could take this slider bar and we can actually compare the documents like this. And this isn't the best example when we're comparing floor to floor but we have the ability to do it and it's shown us that 103 is represented on this side and 101 is represented on that side. So let me go back and where the best use of that slider bar really comes up is when we're talking about comparing version to version. So I went ahead and I put a, uh, a pretty good file in here for doing that. And this one's a, a PDF that was generated directly out of a PDF, but you can do it on either, either one, it, it doesn't make a difference. But if I go in here to the actual versions, you'll notice that I have the ability to see every date that this same file was uploaded with the same name. And I can, I can revert back to a previous version if I needed to, um, or I could just, this history is here. So it's really nice to see when somebody did something and how we've got to that most recent version. If I go to compare versions here, I'm then asked, prompted to choose the two versions that I would like to compare. So I'm just gonna stick with the version two and version three and we'll compare these. So now I should be able to distinguish some of the differences between the actual uh, PDF itself. And this is where I like to, to demonstrate the slider bar. So if I use a slider bar and I, and I carry it across from one to the other, you'll see that things begin to kind of change uh, as I do that. So right in here, you can see uh, what that looks like. And you'll notice here on the top left that this is V2. On the top right, this is V3. Um, so it's kind of telling us which one is which there. And we can see the differences. Also over here on the right-hand side, you can see how they finished out that bathroom and added that bathroom there. So that's one way of kind of analyzing your PDFs and using the functionality within the software to do that. Uh, we also can do a stacked view. And so this view is, uh, it's useful and, and on the roadmap, they're, they're actually looking to be able to change these, these colors of the, uh, of the lines themselves. So it'll be easier to, to see and it'll be represented. But you can see here, uh, this lighter gray area, this is where the changes were. And if we navigate over here to the, this section here, you can actually see um, these changes as well. So it doesn't stand out as well as if it was uh, two different colors but um, it, is a, it, it is coming, um, but that's not, that functionality is not there yet. There is, uh, there is that functionality, I think, when you, when you compare uh, documents that have been generated from the model, but uh, PDFs, we're still kind of waiting on that one to come out. But let's talk about, uh, from a model comparison perspective, uh, having docs, and, and just so you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not in Navisworks and Glue and those type of, uh, those type of programs every day. So I don't work with, I work more primarily with the field management side. Um, so Michael's kind of, that's his expertise, but what docs has allowed, uh, allowed me to do as a, as a really an unsophisticated user when it comes to the model is now I have the ability to come in here 
and actually utilize that model. So you'll notice here that in the brackets is uh, it shows up as 3D, and uh, that means that that's going to give me an actual um, look into the model itself. So this is probably going to get it's going to be a little bit slower um, since I'm running GoToMeeting and everything. But generally, um, this is really quick. Um, it's really easy for me to to look at this model and see what's going on and understand this. I don't have to have any any uh, real training uh, other than you know how to use a mouse, and that's not uh, that's not a problem for most people. So um, here you can see this. I can click on a wall. We can go to properties, uh, see what uh, what properties are there. We can also go to the model browser, see kind of where that falls. We can hide this wall, turn it on or off, right? Um, there's a lot of functionality that we can do around this just by simply uh, going in here and playing around. Um, this is not gonna, there's no, uh, there's only read capabilities here. So we're not gonna write this back uh, to any kind of uh, design software. So it's, it's pretty protected. People can come in here and play around and not have to worry about messing up the model itself. We can also just create general design review markups associated with the model itself. And uh, those will always be available and uh, right here in our markups list. So it looks like it, for some reason it failed to load the list here, but that, that, those markups will be uh, available. So we're gonna go ahead and exit that markup view. And then uh, we also have the ability to uh, kind of compare our drawing and our model uh, together. So if we want to look at uh, the model here and we want to look at the drawing on the right hand page, we can uh, view these independent of each other. So looks like uh, looks like I'm putting a pretty heavy load on it. So let me see if I can uh, get this to pull up. Typically it works it works pretty well. So you can see here, have the ability to, to view these independent independently of each other. So this is also helpful when you're just trying to do some analysis on the, on the uh, model. And then finally, this is one that I really, uh, I really like. And I think that from a tips perspective, it's, it's often overlooked. Um, but just like we did here, if we go into V2, we can, we have the option to compare the versions between the, the PDFs. If we go here, I think this is missed frequently uh, under the 3D, that option doesn't exist for us here. So the assumption is that we cannot compare uh, one model to the other. And that's an inaccurate assumption. Um, for some reason, um, Autodesk decided to put this compare feature underneath the history section here for the models. So uh, why they did that, I'm not sure, but that's sort of the one of the tips that I wanna give you today is just, uh, keep in mind that we can compare the models and I actually find it to be uh, pretty pretty useful. So if I say uh, compare versions here, you'll notice that um, it's gonna ask me which two versions I wanna compare. And so if I had five or 10 in here, I could choose the first one compared to the the 10th one and uh, it would allow me to compare them. But I'm gonna try to compare this and this does you know require a little bit of bandwidth. So hopefully we'll be able to be able to do this um, over GoToMeeting but it's really actually a pretty neat process. Uh, and you can see here what it's done is it's really already uh, analyzed this model, um, generated a, a list here of things that have been added, removed or modified. So now I can start to go through here and see uh, and filter and toggle the, this information on or off uh, really quickly. So let's just look at the model here and let's take the removed out of the picture and let's take the modified out of the picture. So effectively, it looks like what we've got is we have uh, in this second version of the model, everything on the second floor has been added. So that's potentially additional scope. Now, this is probably anticipated additional scope, but it's still additional scope. And it's very, it's very easy for us to see what has been added to this model. Um, we could go through here by discipline and turn off each individual discipline um, and just narrow this down. So if we turn everything off, and then we just turn, let's say, uh, architectural back on. You can see uh, what we've got there. If we want to turn on structural, turn architectural off, uh, those items will show up. So we have the ability to kind of filter by, by each one of these to see what's going on. Um, one good one, I think that, uh, I believe it's on the added. So you can see here under plumbing, the only thing that we have are these toilets that were added. 
here in the middle and it looks like maybe some supply lines or something uh or those i guess those would be a drinking fountain but we could supply or we could find out by simply going through here so you can see we could just walk through here and it's going to highlight what everything is so this is a, a commercial lavatory uh is what that represents and uh you can see it's just going to take us through each one of them uh, zoom in on that one and fit the screen. So that's a way that we can actually look at this and review it uh, very quickly. You'll also notice that this is our only option is just to navigate from one to the other. If we go back to this page here, um, let's turn off the added and let's look at the removed. So we've got the removed listed here. Now keep in mind, it's showing two of 17 and that's primarily because I'm only showing the uh, plumbing. So let me turn all of these on so that I can capture all 17 of these. And you'll see these are the things that were removed from this project. So again, I can click over here. You'll notice that uh, changes between version one and two, and it's showing me those uh, very quickly. So again, a, a really useful tool, but I like this one the most um, is just the modified. So if I take this out and I go to modified um, and I click on an item. So in this case, it's this roof assembly here. Um, which is kind of highlighted in this light blue. Uh, the neat thing to me is that I can quickly toggle between what that was in version one and what that was in version two. So now it's it's really easy for me to kind of granularly look at the the different um, the different items here and see what they what they are and how they uh, how they're working and how they've been changing from version to version. Um, so this is a pretty powerful feature. Again, I am not a, uh, a model guy. Revit and uh, Navis is not something that I'm overly comfortable with uh, getting into. So me having the ability to go in here and analyze this very quickly from a web browser without any expensive license or uh, desktop application to do this on uh, is, is really a cool feature. Uh, to, to give me access to, to this level of uh, the model, I guess, that I wouldn't have otherwise. So that, those are kind of my tips and tricks for docs. And we may host a, uh, a webinar specifically on the functionality of docs. But for those of y'all that have not used it, um, you know, you could download a 30 day trial of it and play around with it. Um, but right now, uh, the document management portion is, is built out the most and then again, you're going to see these vertical uh, verticals coming out of it, like uh, submittals with project management and field management, and then the model coordination portion all being built on top of this overlying document management portion, which we're calling docs. So uh, just wanted to, to kind of share that with you as part of this tips and tricks for this month, um, give you a little bit of exposure to it since a lot of you haven't had any exposure to it, or maybe it's just been a while since you've looked at it. Um, so anyways, having said that, um, I think we're going to transition over one more time back to Michael and uh, Michael's going to kind of close out this uh, webinar and we will take some questions here at the end. Michael, you may be muted. There we go. So Okay, thanks guys. So before you, um, we, we start, we're gonna do uh, our final poll question and that poll question is, have you used or tried BIM 360 Ops? And so, wow, overwhelmingly, overwhelming response is, no. So, um, 97% well. Okay. So, um, since that's the case, I'll go very quickly over what BIM 360 Ops is. Um, um, BIM 360 Ops is Autodesk's answer to like a facility management and owner turnover um, product. Okay. Basically, what you can do is you can, um, you can, upload your model or even just upload assets or or your your plans or checklists or whatever to bim 360 ops and it's going to allow you to um manage your facility better so it, basically uh, what we've seen uh people use it for is 
you know, uh, if, 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 if it's like a, a, a P3 kind of project or something like that, or maybe a, like if you've got a sophisticated owner or so, somewhat sophisticated owner that's looking, that wants to be able to uh, manage his facility after he is done with uh, construction, <clears throat> uh, then it's going to allow him to, to create um, proactive and reactive tickets. It's going to allow him to schedule maintenance activities. Um, he can, uh, it's going to give his uh, maintenance men the power to uh, review the tickets on their phone using uh, the BIM 360 Ops app. Um, so they can they can review just about anything that they need to review there. So what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm just going to show very quickly how you can um, <coughs> export uh, data just from Revit. You could do it from BIM 360 field, or you could just do it straight from your Revit model. But uh, yeah, uh, but if you want to uh, update uh, data from Revit, basically you just have to download the uh, BIM 360 Ops um, Revit add-in. And the way that you do that is you go <coughs> to uh, the building, you hit, <coughs> um, actually it's not right there. It is, uh, you go to your uh, portfolio, I believe, and then you come down here to settings. Once you've got it open, and then you basically you download the BIM 360 Ops added for Reddit. You can also get it on the Autodesk app, um, app Store, but this to me is uh, the easiest way to do it. Okay, so um, let's talk about my portfolio here. So you can kind of see, okay, it's showing me overall. Okay, if I'm managing a bunch of different buildings, and I can see all the different things that are going on with it, the the open tickets, the new, and then the overdue ones. Okay, I can see if the, I can add a building if I want to. I can add assets or contacts. Um, I can do all kinds of stuff. If I cycle through, then I can see, okay, there's a whole bunch of different, uh, you know, I, I can have uh, different buildings in here, okay? <laughs> so what I, all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, I, I wanna take a look at my assets that are in the Greensboro Brewery, because that was the model that we're messing with today. So I can see, okay, I've got my uh, VAVs and my air terminals in here, there's seven of them, and then I've got a whole bunch of, uh, pipe spools, so sprinkler, cold water, and hot water. So I don't need to upload them, but I but I do, however, need to upload um, my lights. <laughs> so uh, the way that you do that is you just come in here, and we'll just duplicate uh, in in Revit. We'll duplicate our view, <clears throat> and I'll just rename this um, <clears throat> ops dash lights. I could have just used, <coughs> pardon me, the Spin 360 lights one, but I'm just going to use this Ops Light one just so I can show you exactly how to do it. Okay, so I go to Ops Light and then I, I uh, um, choose to turn off everything in my model other than um, my lights. So we'll go to lighting devices and lighting fixtures, hit apply, and then hit OK. Okay, so important. Uh, thing to note here, the, you only want to export the things, you know, you only want to have what's visible um, be exported because otherwise it's going to export everything that's showing in this view. So if, like I said, I only want to do lights, so I'm just going to export lights. Okay, so I hit export. So now it asks me for a uh, BIM 360 Ops code. So I'll come over in here. I'm going to actually put this on a different screen for right now. and I'll come back over here to my project, go to my building, and then it's going to, right here, I can generate an export code. So I've got that right there. I'll just copy it, and I'll paste it right in here. Hit submit. <clears throat> and so there it goes. So it's going to bring in, while it's doing that, uh, okay, I'm kind of stuck. But um, <clears throat> what it's doing right now is it just, um, Export. It's bringing in all of the uh, the all the little all oh, export. Weird. Um, but let's see if it actually did work, and it just gave me an error. Let's try this one more time. Okay, so it did bring it in. I don't know why it gave us an, an error, but you can see. Um, okay, so it. it it brought in the name of this of these items. Um, let's see, uh, it brought in 
the location of them. Um, you know, if I wanted to, I could add a, man, a manufacturer. Um, I could add all kinds of stuff. So I could add this all manually, or um, if I wanted to, I could, um, you know, I, I could, um, you know, just add a PDF. Uh, so I could just add my own manuals and my product data, and and basically we've got that there so that our um, our techs can use can utilize them later on. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, but you know, basically it's just just as simple as just finding the uh, the export code and then pushing the data. Okay. Um, so. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it for uh, for for BIM 360 options. Just that simple to export it. Um, so right now we'll just kind of um, uh, transition over, uh, and we will, um, you know, I guess answer any questions that are out there. And Clint, me and Clinton will both be available. All right, we have had a few questions come through. Um, one comment came through during the second poll question on Glue. Um, we use Glue as a viewer for our field guys with their iPads. They use it a ton and love it. Um, okay. A question that came through is if you save to your desktop, if more models are added to the merged model, it doesn't add to the .nwf file. If you, it should, it should add them if you uh, if you hit refresh, <clears throat> I believe. But, but I'll I'll look back on that. <clears throat> All right. I'll, I'll check that out. As far as I know, it I believe that it does. Okay, good to know. Um, can you append the glue model in Navisworks and then attach your DWG files to coordinate? Um. Okay. Good question. So. Um, <clears throat> you can um in Navisworks if you hit a pin right here then you should be able to <clears throat> call a model down from um uh you know from from glue. So so if you if you had if you upload it to glue then you, you could do that. You could append it that way. Uh you could also if you were to save your file uh like as an NWD on your desktop then you could you could do that as well. You could you could modify it as well. You could view it like that. Mm -hmm. That is def that's one thing that I have heard uh, a lot is that, that they would like to be able to have the ability to uh, to append um, local files. Um, uh, but um, right now that right now that's not an option. I think that you know that that's probably on the roadmap though. All right, and we have a question about the BIM 360 product pricing. Are they priced separately, or is there a way to subscribe as a package? Okay, um, so that's a good question. Um, you can um, subscribe. Let's see. Uh, right now, uh, you can, you they you can buy them separately. They're like a per seat license. Um, so, you know, you can buy a license, a field, buy a license, a glue, buy, a, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. For ops, it's free with the, uh, the uh, you know, for your first 100 tickets, I believe, or 125, I can't remember the exact number. Um, and then after that, there's a there's a fee for it. But um, so if you're just looking to manage your your, uh, your models on there, then it's it's just free. Um, uh, let's see, but for, for docs, uh, the plan is, uh, because everything is going to be integrated together, you'll be able to basically pick which module you want to uh, utilize. I think Clinton showed that off at the beginning of his second presentation today. Um, <clears throat> so you'll be able to pick, okay, well, I want to utilize model management, or I want to use, use document management, or I want to use shield management. You know, you can say, I want to use all of those or just one or two of those and then basically you know it, the price will kind of all be rolled in together <clears throat> if that makes sense so it'll be a like a, the the pricing will be uh more or less a uh a per mo like a per module um pricing strategy i guess yeah and if you have any additional 
questions on pricing, we can get into that. Um, you can speak with one of our sales reps who will contact um, you following the webinar. And I have one more question. What platforms is BIM 360 Ops available on? Okay, so um, Ops is available um, on the iPhone uh, or on um, you know the desktop computer. Um, I believe that it's also uh, available. There's a there's also a um, uh, Android app. Is that correct, Clinton? Uh, I think I think right now I think there's plans for the Android. I think from, I may be wrong on this. Okay, yeah, it's in the works. It's in developed. Yeah, I think it's in the works. <coughs> but, but yeah, right now it's, it's uh, iPhone and uh, and desktop. And then the, the purpose for that is. Uh, um, you know that you want your technicians out in the field that are managing you know your facility to be able to have have quick access to it on their phone um, and then you want to be able to as an administrator to, to quickly add things um, you know or modify things okay all right um, and, and what, I guess I'm sorry. Okay. okay go ahead no no go you ahead. go ahead this is a new question came through <laughs> okay. so Okay, so like, you know, similarly, you know, for, for BIM 360 docs, it works on iPhone, iPad, um, Android, uh, and then also uh, like on your desktop computer. So, um, you know, I think the plan is for everything to kind of come together, but for docs, uh, which was the second thing that, that Clinton uh, demonstrated, that that's, that's uh, across almost all platforms. All right, great to know. Um, one more question came through that says, what's the combined storage if you subscribe to BIM 360 Glue team and docs? Uh, Clinton, I'll let you take that one if you know it. I know the uh, the question for docs, which there is no, no current limit for um, storage capacity. So um, I don't think that that would, would ever be an issue. As far as glue, Michael, is there any any that you're aware of? No, no, there's no there's no limitation for glue either. Um, and and I would anticipate that there would not be a, a limit for uh, model management when um, when it really becomes uh, really robust um, <clears throat> either for for well, when it's in a BIM, the, the new BIM 360. Yeah, in my experience with the product line for BIM 360, storage limitations have uh, never existed, and I don't think there's really any discussion of them existing um, in the future as of right now. Yeah, the biggest limitation or the only limitation that I can really mention is, uh, you know, um, is uh, the size of your phone or <clears throat> the size of your iPad. So, you know, if you've got like, 90 gigabyte or 90 uh, yeah, gigabytes of data and you've only got a 64 gigabyte uh ipad then um you know th that's going to be your your limitation but but it's not going to be there's not going to be a limitation with uh with how much data you can put on on up in the cloud but but even even with it's it's important to mention that even with a hardware limitation like that there's uh you know there's ability to determine what you want to bring to your ipad so you don't have to bring all 90 right. 90 gigs down, like Michael mentioned, Correct. you could bring down just uh, five gigs worth of data that was important to you. So um, the hardware is a limitation, but it's it's really easy to work around. Um, and, and you know, regardless whether you're running a 16 gig or a um, you know a 64 gig or something like that, it, it's pretty easy to work around and get the information you need uh, to your phone. But but the hardware will be a limitation depending on how much information you need to carry around offline with you. 